What is the basis of God's plan for the body of Christ? What has Jesus given to help build his body? Why should all of that matter to me? These questions and more we'll be exploring in today's episode of Word Search with me, Christopher Dryden. We're here on episode number 12. We're exploring God's body builders. Word Search is a place to search God's word and a time for God's word to search us. We encourage godly character development through stimulating seeking God's kingdom first and his righteousness on the understanding that this will inform and transform our prayer and practice. Word Search is to find treasure in God's word so that we can be hearers and doers of that word for his glory. On today's episode of Word Search, then, we'll cover what we've explored previously on Word Search before having the reading for today, which is based on Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 to 16. There we'll be examining the content of that verse of Scripture, as well as exploring the concepts, expressing the conclusions that we get from that, and seeing how those fit into what we understand to be God's fit body plan. As ever, on Word Search, we'll be wrapping up with some considered prayer points that should help inform and transform both our prayer and practice. Previously on Word Search, we started our brand new series looking at God's fit body plan, where I established that every believer, every follower of Jesus Christ, as well as being a minister and a missionary and a messenger, that they are first and foremost a member, a member of the family of God. But for this series, we're looking specifically about how every believer is a member of the body of Christ and how every believer then belongs to others in genuine Christian fellowship. And God has a plan for how his body is to function. And that plan requires each part to function well. On the basis of that, we explored the book of Ephesians as a whole and looked at their context as to what Paul was outlining in the book. And then we explored in a bit more detail Ephesians chapter 4, where we had the reading of the chapter in its entirety, considered some of the content in there, before finishing up with some hints as to what God's fit body plan will be covering in terms of what are the gifts that are sent to help the body, what is the work of the ministry, what members are there of the body, and how is the body fit to function, as well as through all of that, establishing why does all that matter to us. So for today's episode of Word Search, we'll be considering carefully about the issue of the gifts sent to help the body, how that hints as to how the body is supposed to function well, and why that matters to us. So God's fit body plan is always looking at how we, as a part of the body of Christ, as a member of the body of Christ, knows how we fit, as well as knows how we fit together and how we should function well for the glory of God. On that basis then, let's have our reading for today. And that reading is Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 to 16. Uh, It's being read from the New Living Translation by my friend once more, Shirley Evans. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's son, that we will be mature in the Lord measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Thank you so much for the reading of the scripture, Shirley. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for your wonderful word to us. We thank you that in the beginning you had a plan when you made man in your image and in your likeness. And even now, as we read your word, we are given clarity and a vision as to how your plan is still going to be expressed for your great namesake. Help us to understand your word at this time and open our minds and our hearts to receive it and act on it for your glory and your honour, O Lord. Let's have a look then carefully at the content of what we've just read in Ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 to 16. Please allow me to work backwards and by work backwards I want us to see what's established in the second paragraph first and then built on that you can see the reasoning for what's going on in the first paragraph, see the connection together and also consider how that makes an impact into our identity as members of the body of Christ. So for example, we can see that the goal is for us to be a healthy, growing body full of love. And how we reach that goal, the method that we reach that goal, is primarily about us speaking the truth in love. And that speaking the truth in love is to stir up growth by living out that love. And the measure of that love and the measure of that growth and reaching that goal and being a healthy, growing body is that we are more and more like Christ. And by we, it really is a corporate issue. So it's not an individual sense of my personal responsibility to, for me to do my best to be the best that I can be. It's about how we grow together so that we can be more and more like Christ. That's the measure to help us to see how we're reaching the goal together. And Paul's concern, we can see, is that by doing that, that should prevent us from being deceived and from remaining immature. So I want us to recognize that in that paragraph that we read here in Ephesians chapter 4. And then from that basis, I want you to notice then what Christ does to help that by giving specific gifts to the body. And those specific gifts are there to help to equip the saints to work. So it's the saints who are equipped to be doing the work and they are equipped by those who are there to be body builders. So the gift to the church are bodybuilders who are there to support the body to play its part and they play their part specifically on an ongoing basis so those bodybuilders are there to help to specifically to help the builder work until we all come to what until we all come to the unity of the faith the knowledge of god's son maturing the lord and all of that reinforces the goal that the that we are a healthy growing body full of love that we are full and complete mature in the lord hitting the standard of christ and that happens paul is telling us as each part does its own special work and then it helps the other parts to grow so as each part plays its role functions as it should and functions well it should stimulate the other parts of the body to do what they're called to do as well Note in here, as you look at that carefully as well, note how crucially Christ is the goal, Christ is the giver, and Christ is the one who fits things to operate together perfectly. Notice that carefully, how it's all about Christ, and it depends on Christ. So as a follower of Jesus, why it should matter to you, why the whole bodybuilding process should matter to you, is that if you are following Christ, you know it's all about Christ, so you're following God's specific plan for how his body grows as Christ gives those gifts, sets the standard, and is the one that we pursue to being like him in being full of love as we all function. So it's, it can no longer just be an individual thing. It has to be how do I fit with others that God has specifically placed me among in genuine Christian fellowship, and how can we stir each other up? to love and good works as hebrews would go on to encourage us to do so that's just a an examination of this part of the scripture and why the body being built is so crucial so on the basis of that let's explore certain concepts that are going on here in this scripture as well everything is about christ so everything finds its fullness its completion in christ and the church is the first place of that so the church is there to express Jesus as his body. 
Now, we'll be going into what that means in, in detail later on in this series, but it's important that as we read what Paul is writing about there in Ephesians 4, we've got that in our head that the church expresses Christ as his body, and every member of the body has a key part to play. They're supposed to function in the body. They, they have a role to play. I'm not always convinced that all of us have that understanding. And I'm not always convinced that some of our expression of who we are as church reflects that understanding. But it's always good to come back to the word of God and not just see it here in Ephesians chapter 4. But it's, it's underpinning all of Paul's encouragement to the church. It's what stimulates Paul to talk to Timothy about how church should operate. It's the same thing that will stimulate Paul in how he will talk to Titus and Philemon. It's the same thing that is inspiring Peter in terms of why he leaves the final words about how we are to be growing in the character of Christ. It's throughout uh, scripture what I'm saying in terms of every member of the body having a key part to play in the body, belonging as a crucial part of the body of Christ. As we know that the church expresses Jesus as his body, so we know that it's there to express Christ both in his character and his conduct. So as it expresses the character of love, it does so in the same way that Christ conducted that in his activities. And that is seen in the special gifts that Christ sends to build his body. That's why they're so crucial. That's why the roles of the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the shepherd and the teacher reflect Christ so crucially. And it corresponds with the commission that Christ gave before he left, when he said clearly that his disciples should go into the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them, teaching them, and then allowing that to continue as an ongoing pattern until we grow, realizing those responsibilities, realizing that commission, and seeing his kingdom come and his will done as expressed through his body. I really encourage you to reflect on those concepts carefully, consider those and meditate on how that should affect your understanding of who you are in Christ, the part you play in the body of Christ, and what Christ's plan is to express to the world who he is, both in his character and his conduct. On the basis of that, then, let's consider some conclusions that we have here. First conclusion that is worth us considering, Christ will be expressed on earth by his body. It's as simple as that, really. That's that's the key conclusion to reach. Christ will be expressed. The issue is, will we genuinely be an intentional part of that expression? And to help with that, he has given the gifts and bits them to operate together perfectly. It's all about him. He's the one that gives and he's the one that's fitting. And the body of Christ will reflect the leading of Jesus. So it's not there to reflect the personality of an individual in terms of a charismatic leader or anything like that. The body of Christ will reflect the leading of Jesus Christ and him alone because he is its head. And he not only leads his body, but he allows his body to grow up, to become mature, to truly reflect the character and conduct of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's an ongoing job. That's a job that never ends because we're always looking to strive to reach that standard and that maturity. And so it's worth considering carefully, as we're about to do in the following episodes, the key role of those bodybuilders, those bodybuilders that I established before as the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and the teachers. It's going to be fascinating to see not only what their role is in the body, but how they help to reflect Christ. And so as we conclude this part of our study, it's worth you considering carefully, can you see Christ, both his character and his conduct, in those gifts, in the apostle, in the prophet, in the evangelist, in the shepherd, in the teacher? Can you see Christ in those? And consider that carefully and think about the implications that that would have for who you are. But in the meantime, what I want us to consider in terms of the series on God's fit body plan is how this episode has helped us to establish certainly the gifts that have been sent to help the body, also how that body is fit to function in terms of how it's to, is supposed to mature into the character of Christ, being a healthy, growing body full of the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, and hopefully why that matters. 
can't stress it enough, it matters because that's the calling that God has on every member of his body. So that if you're following Jesus, that's what you're bearing in mind. And so that as a part of the body, it's good to know how you fit and then how we fit together to function as God wants us to. On the basis of that, let's consider some prayer points as we leave. First of all, praise God for the body of Christ. Praise God that he's got this idea and it's, his idea is being ex expressed and established in the world as his body is revealed. Thank God as well that he has sent key bodybuilders to help stimulate members to work and stimulate the working members to help the body to grow. Thank God for that. Then ask God for the wisdom for how the body should function and your role in that. And then as you ask God for that, seek God for direction on body functions as well. And then celebrate how God's eternal purposes will be fulfilled in the Lord Jesus Christ as his body expresses the reality of who he is for his great namesake, knowing that kingdom people apply kingdom practices in kingdom pursuits for kingdom purposes and there's no greater kingdom purpose as we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness that we should reveal to the world who Jesus is in his character and his conduct so those are key prayer points I want you to consider and I hope that it will help to shape and form activities and words that you say and conversations that you have in the coming days weeks months and years Next time on Word Search with me, Christopher Dryden, we'll be exploring episode 13, continuing looking at the bodybuilders that God has given us in terms of those who are sent and those who speak. Uh, those who are sent and those who speak. God's bodybuilders, episode 13. I hope you can join me to explore that in our next episode. In the meantime, please remember to like this particular video if you've enjoyed it. Share it with those that you care about, encouraging them to likewise understand their role in God's fit body plan. And also, subscribe to the channel so that you can be notified, as long as you make sure that you click that notification bell, you can be notified about latest updates on Word Search so that you never miss an episode as it pops up. And you can likewise be edified to edify others if you want to support the channel we'll be happy to receive that support please contact us on the details in the description below it's key for us though that you apply whatever you've learned from today whatever you've seen in the scripture whatever you've received from god as his holy spirit has spoken in this word put it into action and see what god does in your life as ever though thank you so much uh, for listening to this episode of Word Search, because here at Word Search, we're really keen not just to be hearers of the word, but to be doers of the word as we're finding treasure in God's word for his honor and for his glory. Until next time on Word Search, God richly bless you and all that you do. Shalom.